After surviving a crash landing into water as a passenger early in his aviation career, then flying as a commercial pilot for more than 25 years and spending 15 years teaching aircraft egress techniques, Brian Webster knows a lot about how to prepare for and survive an aircraft emergency over water. Here's a sample of some aircraft egress tips and techniques taken from his course. If we're going to have a problem, 99% of the time it's on a takeoff or on a landing. And that's not the time to try to find a, hold, a harness or a shoulder harness of any description and put it on. It should be on your body. It should be well understood how it works and don't remove it under any conditions. They save lives. There's absolutely no question of that. And just plain wear them. If you have a single strap across your body, that's okay. If you have your own airplane, I highly suggest you invest in getting some really good quality double over the shoulder harnesses. And the reason is simple. It keeps your body straight and true in an accident, you can't hit the dashboard, and your survival rate, if there is an accident, is much, much better. When it comes to a water accident, an airplane will stop almost immediately. If they go in nose first, you're gonna generate somewhere in the area of 15 Gs, which is quite excessive for the human body. The fact remains, this equipment was put on board the airplane for safety. Just plain wear it. And I know a lot of people don't, but trust me, I'm living proof that it's a really good thing just to plain do. Why I'm showing this is because everybody has lap belts says, well, I'll go buy shoulder harnesses. And that's great. But if you buy these, all right, they just slide over, make certain that they come off easily. And I'll tell you why. So we've had them in our equipment here. What happens is people go to get out of them and boom, they lock on this. In other words, you've taken that off, that's fine, but these things won't come off because one size fits all when you buy them from a vendor and often these are larger, like this one. This one's small, but if a lot of the older ones are really wide and you paid $400, well, they're going to work, darn it. You know, and they barely sit on, oh, there, I got it. And every time you do them up, you go, oh, they'll get easier and they never do. But in any event, what it amounts to is you've, you've saved yourself on the incident, no doubt of that, but now you try to get out underwater. How many have done this or seen that done in commercial flying? <laughs> Never seen that? Yeah. Oh boy, on the coast I saw it almost every day, but definitely a couple times a week, without a doubt. People jump in and they don't care, they'll go either way. What's the problem? Yeah. Who cares? You the if you go upside down, gravity still works underwater. Your body weight will pin that in your belly. And you got jackets and everything else on. You will not get out. It's not you might. We've had this happen 500 times or more, and not one person has got out yet. Here's how it goes. You're upside down, person can't find it. Their eyes go big, cheeks go bigger, then they speed up what's not working, then they overpower it by grabbing something to pull. And then it's all over, we write it and get you out. In real life, I'm sure that's how it goes. You can't get out if the belt's upside down. If somebody's trapped in a belt and you take a Leatherman, which all the bush pilots wear on their hip, underwater to somebody who's drowning, either they're gonna get their, their slashing in a really bad way all over the body or you're gonna get hurt. That can't hurt you. You just put it up on the uh, on the headliner, a little bit of Velcro, pull her down and zip zip, gone. As the door handle goes up and down, Fred, Fred Flintstone built that for me years ago. Anyway, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, 180, 185, how many you got these? Okay, now flip the airplane. Now come out of your seat, what are you gonna do? You're gonna try to push it up. You bet, because you invert as soon as you undo your seatbelt, and bingo, snap, it's in your hand. You've just locked yourself in a box. The steel, as you know in the center, has thread. The handle is made of porous aluminum and has the female that strips. What is the brace position? I'm in the back of the beaver. I have a single belt across my waist. What's the brace position? Lay down, put a cushion or jacket on you and put your hands on the back of your ankles or in the seat posts. Now I'm in the front seat of the beaver. I got a single strap or a double set. What do I do? Cross your arms, grab your shirt and hang on. And you'll do what's called the squint and squeeze. You'll do this. Guaranteed. It makes sense to me, because you lock the belt in position, you can't fall out. Then bang, you hit, you're gonna go straight forwards, because guess what, this thing has nothing holding it. It'll go right to the dash. If you don't have shore harnesses on, you're not gonna like the outcome. But your feet, nobody thinks of this. My buddy, when he, crept, uh, when he got out of that 150, he had a broken left ankle. The reason is, he was flying the airplane, so the nose wheel kicked over as soon as he hit the water, and it fires the rudder pedal out at high speed. Mm -hmm. So you wanna slide your feet down. Again, shoulder harnesses keep you in place. When you're actually, you got a single strap, okay, yeah, they're okay. They're, they're not the best, I'll tell you right now. They've been known to break collarbone, and as well, you can get back injuries because your head will torsion, and then your lower back takes the, the energy. If you're making a water entry after an engine fire situation or whatever the case is, you try to land normally. Remember, you've got electric flaps, so you don't turn the master off, because you might want them last second. All right, but the big thing is slide your feet down off the pedals because guaranteed one's coming out. That's a guarantee, there's no question of it. 
privately. What's the deal? How often do you have to inspect them? Never. How come? Because you're under the Marine Act. You're not a float plane until you leave the water. You're a boat. And if you go into the, and I've done all this stuff obviously, if you go into the laws of Marine, it says you must have this equipment on board, and they show if it's all tattered, throw it away. But nowhere does it say it has to be inspected. And that's why. So common sense says if you have a float plane and you have this equipment on, get it inspected every five years. That's my way of looking at it. And I've had more than enough come through the door and they bring their stuff and I look at it, it says 1984. Put her on to see how you do. And they never work, not one. So just spend the money and get them inspected. How many have the Mustangs? Anybody? Cool, they work good. You bought them wherever. When you bought them, did they come with a box or a bag that said this is a manual pull only? Please tell me you did. Yeah? Okay. What would happen if you got the other one that says right here, water activated? Well, it gets a little damp in the cockpit. And you're uh, you're going to die. Gonna you're going to die. If you wear this unit or any unit, like a floater coat or anything else that gives buoyancy and you flip the airplane, that person is rendered useless. They will be stuck to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Every time you work, and I attest to this, every time you work underwater, you burn five seconds of air. I've calculated, we've done it running around with weights and all this stuff at the bottom of the pool. Five seconds of air. If you can hold your breath for 30 seconds, <gasps> you're good for six steps of hard work. And then you're done because you're taxing your body. So the fact is, if you're working to overpower buoyancy to get to the door, and then you have to go down a considered distance because there's a door sill, you won't get out. If you're right beside the door, your chances are 50-50. If you're back a seat, I don't think you'll get out. Okay, so you tell me what you would do with this, okay? Here's your raft, it's sitting in the back of the aircraft. The airplane has just crashed, boom, it's in the water. What would you do with that raft? I'd just pull, pull no, i throw it out. Okay. Yeah, you throw it out the door. Yeah. And then you jump out, and then you pull it. Okay, it's a 30 knot wind, you threw it out the door. Oh, no, they're coming uh, back! <laughs> Okay. No, I think you hold yes. here and no. pull it out. Yes, no, better than that. Put your wrist out, like that. Ah. Put it on your wrist, don't let it go. That's attached to the raft. Yeah. If you let go of that, there's a wind. When it inflates, it's a kite. It's gone. Quick swimming. Yeah, they only weigh 21 pounds. So the fact is, way it goes. The next thing they don't tell you is if you're in the water, and let's say search and rescue drops this thing into the water, okay? They come over with a herc or whatever, they can drop them. So you're in your boat or wrecked airplane, and you got this thing and you're swimming, okay? And I'll just show you. I'm in here just uh, swimming along and okay, I got the raft, oh thank God. So I put it over my wrist and I pull, Psh, and that's great. What would happen if the raft through tide turned that way? Any idea? Thank you. Take that little bottle there, Eric, you're a tough guy. You rattle it against your skull a couple times. Okay, yeah. That is inside here unprotected. It's just slipped into a sleeve of this material. When you pull this, the manufacturer knows to send the bottle the opposite direction. If it you spins, it. yep, when you inflate a raft, if you did it in this room, it would go bang, 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 and then with a vengeance, wham, over it would go. Because the last time, and then it sits there and hisses, they over inflate. In other words, if it takes 100 pounds to inflate them, they put in 120. Then it has a valve that lets the air go back down. You're going, oh, no, no, it's leaking, don't leak. No, that's fine, don't worry about it. It's got an <laughs> overflow valve, okay? But this, in a raft, on the last blow, is going to go high up in the air and slam down on the ground. That's the way they build them. Just don't get your head in the way. Do ELTs work underwater? Do they work if the airplane's upside down in a marsh and the no. antenna's grounded? You see, you gotta think about all this stuff. So as a passenger, it's always wise, as a pilot, to show the passenger where the LT is, how it works, where to take it out, and how to run it. Simplistic as could be, I've got an ancient one here, but there you go, Jane, you ever seen one of them? No. You will, it's on board your airplane. It's got three position switch, on, off, arm. Off is off, on is on, arm is where it sits for an impact. In other words, if it gets hit, dropped, or the airplane lands hard, off it goes, sends a signal up through a, basically an antenna on the back of the airplane to the satellites, down to somebody who cares who will look after it. And they'll know where you are, and they'll send somebody out to help. If the airplane's upside down in a marshy area, the antenna on the back of the airplane could easily have grounded, and then it won't work. Or if it's underwater, it might work if it's facing upwards in shallow water, but it won't work in salt water, I'm told, at all. So again, teach your passengers where this stuff is, especially if you've got family members who fly with you all the time. Because they might save your bacon while you're laying there waiting for help by turning it on. Maybe it didn't go off. Here's one for you. You're flying your 72s or your 150s. Do you lock the cargo door in the back? I don't. You don't. You're right. But why wouldn't you? 
Well, you can't get out of them anyway, so that's not going to help you, but you can't get into them. Here's the deal. You don't realize in a lot of cases unless you think of this. If you're in a Cessna and you've just closed the door or put the door handles down, you've locked yourself in. In other words, nobody can come open the door. Because when you put the handle down, mechanically, you lock the door. See, we don't think of that. Now let's say, just for a moment, you came in on floats or a wheel plane, you went upside down the water. Okay? How is anyone get in to save you? You see? If you left the cargo door open, then they can come through that. They normally, there's only a couple years that did it where you can come out of them. Normally there's no latch on the inside. It's only on the outside to get in.